Estonia, 1991. After more than 50 years of Soviet occupation and communist dictatorship, Estonia regained its independence. The legacy of the communist era for the Estonians was, as for all the other countries of the former Soviet Union, disastrous. In 1991, Estonian GDP per capita was less than $3,500. The equivalent in today's terms of countries like Bolivia or El Salvador. Of course, the worst was yet to come. The disintegration of the Soviet bloc was a hard blow for its member countries. And of course, Estonia was no exception. In 1992, its economy shrank by more than 20%. It was time to build a new country model. And, visual politic fans, this was an idea that the Estonians took very, very seriously. While some of the offshoots of the Soviet Union, such as Ukraine, Uzbekistan and Belarus, plunged into instability, crisis and autocracy, Estonia's story was completely different. Today, Estonia is one of the most prosperous countries in the world. Its potential is immense, and its standard of living is improving all the time. In 2020, Estonia's price-adjusted GDP per capita approached $40,000, which has already enabled it to surpass countries like Spain. And that is not all. The development of practically all its macroeconomic parameters beats not only Spain, but also the majority of European countries by a long way. For example, it is one of the countries with the healthiest public accounts in the world, and has the highest rates of entrepreneurship of any European country in relation to its population. Each year, more than 20 companies are created for every 1,000 inhabitants. That's six times higher than the EU average. And so, Estonia has become the nation of European entrepreneurs. Something like a small and, yeah, let's be honest, icy Silicon Valley in the very heart of the European Union. But having said that, the question is, how on earth have they achieved such an evolution in such a short time? What is the secret behind the Estonian model? What are the ingredients of their success? Well, here, as we told you in an exclusive video on Patreon, we can highlight several factors, from fiscal policy to its commitment to technology. In addition, among the most important ingredients of Estonian success is its education system. You may not know it, and you would never have imagined it, but Estonia has the best education system in Europe. In fact, it calls itself the education nation. But do you want to know what is so special about its educational system? What exactly are its most important characteristics and key aspects? If you do, of course you do. Check this out. The how is more important than the how much. The success of the Estonian educational model is not a matter of opinion. It is something confirmed by all the institutions dedicated to evaluating the various educational systems, including, of course, the PISA report. According to PISA, Estonia literally leads not in only Europe, but the world. After Singapore, this small Baltic country is the top scorer in all three basic skills, reading, mathematics, and science. And that is not the end of it. Let's move on to some important facts. The country has the world's highest percentage of high achieving students from lower income families, and it records the smallest difference in results between rural and urban environments. What's more, they have the lowest rate of students without basic education, just 5%, and one of the lowest grade repetition rates in the OECD. As if all of that was not enough, it also ranks highest in terms of foreign language proficiency. And so, visual politic friends, here the social elevator is running at full speed. Estonia has overtaken the Finnish education system itself, until now the benchmark for education in Europe. So how did they do it? And right here, I know what many of you are thinking. All right, Grant, sure, sure, sure. They spend an awful lot more than all of us on education. But in this case, if you said that, you'd be very wrong. Yes, Estonia makes significant effort in education, but public spending per pupil is by far not the highest in the OECD, not even if we adjust spending for the differences in price and wages. In fact, there are many countries with much higher expenditure per pupil, and yet much worse results. Do you want an example? Well, how about get your visual politic bingo cards out? Spain, check this out. As you can see, despite having the best educational results by far, Estonia is far from the country that spends the most on education per pupil. In fact, its level of spending is well below the OECD and EU averages, even taking into account the price difference. Which brings us directly to an idea that I think bears repeating. No. Politicians, spending more on education is not the recipe for success. If it were that simple, it'd be pretty easy, wouldn't it? It'd be easy enough to spend more to get better results. The reality, however, is totally different. It's not about how much is spent, but above all, about how the fund 
funds are used. So please, politicians and journalists of all colors and all parties, stop using the money mantra once and for all. Let's take another example. Iceland spends much, much, much more per pupil than Estonia. And I repeat, this is even taking into account the differences in salaries and prices. So if we go by the political logic that more spending means better results, then Iceland should have a much better education system than Estonia. However, surprise! It's not only that Estonia wins, it's that Iceland, according to PISA, for example, is one of the worst performing countries in Europe. Spending, my friends, is not everything. But having said that, and now we know that it's not just a question of money, what do you say we get right down to it and dive into the key aspects of the Estonian education system. What can we all learn from them? Stick around for that and more puns. Check this out. The Pillars of Estonian Prosperity Okay, visual politic fans, clear your mind for a while because the educational model we are going to talk about has little to do with anything you've ever seen so far. We are going to talk about an educational model that, strangely, is not subordinated to political interests but to the needs of the human capital that the modern world has, including, of course, the world of business and entrepreneurship. Wait, wait, wait. Wait a minute. An education system designed so that students can find a highly skilled job quickly upon completion of their studies? That seems almost crazy. Well, yeah, that's correct. In Estonia, education has become one of the key pillars on which the country's economic plans hinge. Now, the question, the big question, is how exactly does the Estonian educational model differ from that of other countries. Well, the first key can be found in independence. Independence of both schools and teachers. <laughs> And you see, although in Estonia all schools have to adhere to a framework program of minimum content set by the government, the application of this framework is very open and each school, institute or even teacher has a lot of independence in deciding both the final educational curriculum and the method. And believe me when I tell you that both school and teachers were the first ones interested in making all of this work, among other things, because of the dual Estonian model of public financing of education. Wait, 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 wait. Model what? What on earth is that? Well, let's see. In Estonia, private education barely exists. However, despite this, public schools are subject to an intense model of competition. <laughs> On the one hand, the funding of schools follows a philosophy that closely resembles the process of market competition. The income that schools receive is determined by the number of students they attract. The more students a school gets, the more funding it receives. On the other hand, the academic performance and characteristics of each school are constantly evaluated, and the results are fully public. This generates competitive dynamic of parents willing to enroll their children in the best schools and institutes, and in turn, those schools attract more students and get more funding. This process also increases the pressure on the leaders and teachers of the schools with the worst performance, making them try harder. And that's not all. It is no longer just a matter of the best schools and colleges being more in demand, having better reputation and more resources, but that good results also guarantee their survival. Because one of the great challenges facing Estonia is demography. In the last 15 years, the number of students in the country has fallen by 40% which has forced the government and municipalities to close the surplus schools and institutes. However, it's only those with the worst results that are closed. So you can imagine the interest that both schools and teachers have in improving the results and attracting more students. Incidentally, at this point it must be said that the principals and governing bodies of each school have a very, very high level of autonomy in such things as, for example, deciding which teachers they hire, what salaries teaching staff receive, and how they distribute the funding they receive from the government. That's right. Teachers' salaries in Estonia are not the same in all schools, nor are they determined by collective agreement. They are decided within the schools themselves. Of course, the more funding a centre receives, the higher salaries it can pay. It is simply the result of competition. What's more, this greater level of autonomy allows each centre to differentiate itself from others by specialising in different areas – art, economics, science, and so on and so forth. There are even so-called elite schools, a type of school designed to be able to develop all the abilities of the brightest students. But that is not the end of the story. Teachers are also subject to higher levels of competence and more responsibilities than in other countries. For example, if students perform poorly over a long period of time, the teacher may even have to be dismissed. But in order not to have to go that extreme, Estonian teachers receive intense, continuous training, which allows them to improve and refresh themselves in terms of knowledge, content or teaching methods. It is an intense and compulsory training that brings many benefits. For example, the adaptation to new technologies. In return, teachers have more teaching freedom and influence 
in decision making. For example, 83% of school principals in Estonia say that teachers play an important role in tasks such as designing school policies, the curriculum and teaching methods. In this regard, this Baltic country is almost double the OECD average of 42%. Isn't that amazing? Everything, absolutely everything in Estonia's educational model is based on competition. And remember that we are talking about an essentially public system. It seems almost otherworldly. Now at this point, you may be wondering, okay, all right, but what exactly does the school curriculum look like? Does it have anything to do with the country's very high rate of business creation. Let's take a look at that now. Side by side until the final success. We mentioned that at the beginning of the video, the Estonian educational model is primarily oriented towards business and preparation for the world of work. For example, representatives of both civil society and the companies themselves participate in the design of academic programs. But this is not the only area of collaboration. Both secondary and tertiary education have extensive work experience programs that allow Estonian students to enter the labour market with some experience. In this regard, Estonia has made a very strong commitment to include work placements in vocational education, which would also be the equivalent of vocational training. And all also in university master's degrees. And we are not talking about the typical month-long internships. These programs include internships that account for 50% of the training hours. But apart from all the collaboration with companies, we can highlight another very particular characteristic. Estonians are obsessed with equality in the educational phase. And I'm not talking about equality in the sense of making sure that everyone gets a degree, but that everyone has the same conditions regardless of their socio-economic environment. In other words, equality of opportunities, not of results. That means that in Estonia, not only is education paid for by the state, including university, but also textbooks and even the cafeteria. Students in compulsory education have free meals at school. In addition, all pupils up to the age of 19 have free health cover, as well as free nurses in primary schools, free routine medical checkups and free dental care. The fundamental idea is that regardless of the socioeconomic status they are born into, all students can have the same opportunities. In short, competition, specialization, integration with the business world and equal opportunities in a country with little bureaucracy and low taxes? It's not so bad, don't you think? Of course, not everything is perfect. And while Estonia's education system has proven to be by far the best in Europe today, it still has some challenges, two in particular, the shortage of subject-specific teachers and improving the educational performance of ethnic Russian students. <laughs> There you have it. These are the key aspects to Estonia's educational model, the best educational system in Europe and one of the best in the world. One of the ingredients that has allowed this country not only to make a huge leap in prosperity, but also to become a technological leader and a hotbed of startups. The question is, do you think your country should take notes from Estonian success story? What do you think you would like to see in that regard in your country? Leave us your comments in the box below. And as always, if you like this video, please like it so we know and subscribe to our channel by clicking on the little bell down there. And by the way, if you like the work we do, support us and join our community on Patreon, where in addition to contributing to Visual Politic, you can get exclusive content as well as periodic gifts and much more. We'll leave you the link in the description down there. All the best, and I'll see you next time.